Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about dependency injection. Now if you are working on a project, let's say if you are working on some advanced project, of course you will be using some design patterns and one of the design patterns which we come across is dependency injection. Doesn't matter which language we use, maybe Java, C Sharp, PHP, we have this concept there. But why is it so important? So in fact, we have these questions, right? What is dependency injection and why everyone want to use it? In fact, if you talk to some expert in industry, people who are working from a long time, they use this concept by default, you know, for them, it's like a normal thing. But for new developers, it's a new thing, right? For them, you need to understand how, what is dependency injection and why to use it. Now, how to use it, that will seem the practical, but then how to you, why to use it? That's the question. Now think about this. Now when you say dependency, in, in software program, in software what we do is we build code, right? We build objects. If you are working with object oriented programming, so we build objects, right? And those objects are dependent some on some other objects. Uh, so we, we create this object graph, right? So one object is dependent upon some other object and that object depends on some other object. Uh, to, to give an example in real life, let's say if you want to buy a laptop, if you want to build a laptop, let's say you are a laptop manufacturer. Now in this case, in laptop you have certain certain parts, right? We have a RAM, you have a hard drive, you have a screen. And of course, what makes a good laptop is good parts, right? Uh, example, if you buy a laptop from any company, the same company, they have a low range laptop and a high range laptop. What changes is the type of hard drive we use, the type of RAM we use. So of course, all these components are not built by the same company. So let's say if you buy an Apple machine, of course, Apple will not be building all the stuff by themselves. They will be buying it from some other companies. Uh, maybe the screen of MacBook is from Samsung. Maybe the hard drive is from Hitachi. Maybe the RAM is from SanDisk. So all these different company, they, they help. Uh, they help one company to build a project or uh, build a machine. Now the same way, if you want to build a project and if you want to, let's say if you have an object and that object is dependent on some other object, in this case, you will not be building all this stuff by yourself. Of course, you will be having classes for that, right? So in Java, what we do is we first create class and then we create object. Now to get an example, let's say we have a class here, which is class, let's say laptop. And inside class laptop, we need a object of hard drive. We need an object of RAM. Now, how will you do it? Of course, you will be saying new, right? And when you say hard drive, of course, you need a concrete class, right? And that, let's say we have Hitachi hard drive. Now, let's say if you build a MacBook with Hitachi hard drive, what if in future you want to change it? Because we want to achieve this concept of loose coupling, right? I am sure you know about this concept of uh, tight coupling and loose coupling. That's what we have learned in software engineering. When you say loose coupling, it means one object is not totally dependent upon another object. It may get replaced. Example, if you have Hitachi hard drive, in future you might want to use Samsung hard drive. It should, possi it should be possible, right? And that's why we, we use this concept of abstraction. What we do is we say, okay, uh, for each class, let's say Hitachi hard drive, let's create an abstract class or an interface called as hard drive. So when you instantiate it, it will be something like hard drive uh, ABC or hard drive OBJ equal to new Hitachi hard drive so that in future you can change it from Hitachi hard drive to Samsung hard drive. It should be that easy. But there's a question here. We are hard coding it, right? We are saying, hey, we, I'm, I'm going for a new Hitachi hard drive. And that's a bad thing because the moment you say hard coding, the moment you say new, you are going for tight coupling. That's, that's what we don't want. So we want someone else to give me those dependency. Oh, that's an important term here. So the laptop object is dependent on the hard drive object. That's a dependency. So we want to inject the hard drive object inside this inside this laptop class. And the way you can do that is by using some service, which will be uh, external service, they will inject the dependency. Okay, how it is possible. So we have this concept of dependency injection containers. Now they are responsible to create an object for you. Of course, the object has to be created. Uh, so they are responsible to create the object for you and then they will be injecting in your class. Okay, but where to mention that I want to inject and how will we create the object? And that's where we have to do configuration. 
Now, there are different ways of configuration, uh, configuring it. Example, if you are using Java, in Java we have Spring Framework and in Spring Framework, we need to do a lot of configuration. Earlier days, we used to work with Spring Framework, we used to configure everything using XML. Okay, so that's, that's, that's how you can configure. So you create an XML file and in that XML file, you can mention, hey, if someone is asking for hard drive, give this object. Okay, now when you say XML, it means you can edit XML in future, right? So that is not a tight coupled. Okay, but still, as a Java programmer, you don't want to focus more on XML. And that's where in we have Spring Boot in Java, using which what you can do is just, we will be having some class as Hitachi hard drive, right? Or Samsung hard drive. So on top of these classes, you will simply write add component. That's it, okay? So you simply write add component, which makes them dependent, which makes them uh, a component of a Spring framework, which will be generated as per requirement. Okay, so those, those objects are ready with Spring Framework. But what about this class? How will this mention that you want this object? Uh, so on top of your hard drive, what you can say is you can say auto-wired. Okay, that's it. Your Spring Framework says or your Spring Boot with the help of Spring Framework says, okay, uh, here someone is asking for hard drive. Okay, so this class needs a hard drive and I do have a component there so I can connect them. Right? That's, that's auto-wired. And just imagine it's so beautiful. They are getting connected. Again, the implementation you will see later. But this is this is the main idea behind dependency injection, right? But why we need this? Is it only because of tight coupling? Uh, the answer is yes. We don't want to achieve tight coupling. We want loose coupling. Plus, there is one more important factor, which is testing. You need to test your software, right? Now, we always test our software as a whole. But sometimes we need to, not sometime, always we should, al we should also be testing your each component, each unit. Now the thing is, let's say if you want to test a laptop and lap when, you say, when you test a laptop, you should also test the hard drive. But don't you think when you buy a hard drive, like when Apple bought hard drive from Samsung, they must have tested that hard drive, right? Why you need to test the hard drive again and again? So what you want is when you're testing a laptop, you want to separate the hard drive, right? So in, in fact, in Java world, what you can think is you have a class and that class is working with a database object. Now you are testing this class, right? You don't want to test the database object. So you can create a mock object of this, of this class only if they are loosely coupled. So if you have a mock object, you can easily test this class without affecting your database. Okay, and to achieve that feature, you have to make sure that your software is loosely coupled. And that's why we have so many words, right? We have loosely coupled, we have dependency injection. So, so that's, that's so amazing about dependency injection. You just need to implement it so that you can test it better, you can maintain it better, and how it exactly works, that we'll see in the practical video. I hope you enjoyed this thing. Uh, let me know in the comment section your thoughts, and do click on the like button if you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching, everyone.